So let's get started on some sales training. Uh, I'm going to break this thing up into uh, pre-greeting, everything you can do in terms of preparation before you ever greet your first customer. And then the next section will be the actual greeting, how to uh, approach customers and get them through the door and then ultimately get them committed to a certain vehicle and a certain price. And so all that comes later. But for uh, this session, I want, want to focus on the preliminary work that you do before the greeting and then we'll get around to the greeting um, in just a minute. So first of all, let's just think about the pre-greeting, everything you do in terms of preparation, uh, the training, anything you could do at the dealership to be preparing yourself and uh, kind of developing yourself professionally. So I think the first thing you want to do is think about what kind of salesperson you want to be. Think about do you, do you treat this as a career? Do you think about it as a career? And even if you don't, I would ask you to think about, don't you want tomorrow or next week or next month to be easier than today? And I think that's generally true with most of us. Some of us may be taking a sales job and thinking about it in terms of the, um, you know, just a paycheck today or a paycheck at the end of the week. But most of us, when we step into that, we don't know if we're going to be in that capacity for two weeks or two months, or maybe it's going to be a career thing. So I would just first think about, you know, taking steps now to make sure that, you know, in the case it turns into a career or a long-term position for you, that you do the things that make tomorrow easier. And the way that happens is by treating customers well enough that they come back and buy a second vehicle, you know, sometime soon they need another vehicle in the family or they refer friends and family members to you uh, because they just are comfortable with you and you're a nice person and, and they enjoy doing business with you. So that's what you really want. I mean, obviously the more when you're brand new as a green pea, as they say, then you're going to have to hustle out uh, to greet people. You don't have a, a, you know, a bank of customers that already know you especially if you're in a new environment, you don't have a lot of people that are even calling on you uh, to come and buy a car. So that just means you've got to, in order to get any business, you've got to be the first one to hustle out and greet the customers on the lot. And so that will be true whether it's a windy day or a rainy day or whatever. You've got to be out there on the lot greeting people and hustling to outrun the other salespeople. So, you know, I think we all understand that's hard work and it just is going to be... Um, it's going to be difficult to sustain that. So what we want to do is we know plus that the percentage of closes on those customers on just what they call fresh ups is, uh, is going to be lower. So, you know, you know, you're going to close more people when they come asking for you or you have an appointment with somebody to look at some, you know, used uh, two door cars and you just, you know, your closing percentage on that is going to be much higher. So we just, we need to really think about that. When we greet people, let's try to always set the groundwork uh, starting from day one to make sure that next time is easier. And the, the main ways we do that, keep track of the customers that we get, um, keep in contact with them, uh, make a good impression on them, obviously. And then, um, you know, th that will build goodwill and that will uh, build your contact list of people that would be uh, coming to see you by appointment. So that's what we really want to try to, to build in this particular case. Now, tools as far as what you would want to learn. You know, for me, that's just inventory. You know, if you're in a new car dealership, you want to really learn your new car product line and learn all the different features and functions and benefits of the different kind of products and trim levels and packages and all those kind of things. But in a used car environment, you really just want to really know your inventory. You want to uh, make sure you know, you know, which cars are the cleanest and you want to really just get very familiar with your inventory. So certainly in the first few days in a new position like that, and, and this is really going to be true. You know, think about if you're working in an appliance store or anything else, you, you really just need to get familiar with your product first and foremost so that you can be um, the, the real solution that your customer needs most. You know, a lot of times the customers already shopped online when they come to see you and they what they really need from you more than anything is somebody who knows the inventory well enough 
that if they describe to you what it is they're looking for, and we hope you'll eventually get them comfortable enough that they would sit and talk to you and be and speak freely and tell you what it is that they need, because once they do that, they'll begin to realize that you are in the best position to help them to locate the right inventory. And so the vehicle is right for them. So one of your first responsibilities is really just to learn the inventory really well and be prepared to uh, make recommendations to them based on what they have described their needs and interests to be. So again, just get familiar with that. Um, I would even suggest, um, to, and this just popped to, to my head, I never really personally did it, I suppose I had them on my head, but I would even recommend preparing a list that you could even hand out to customers when you meet them, but mostly it's for your own reference and be able to refer to it and show a customer, um, you know, let's call it your top five list. If a customer's shopping for just a good used bargain, they're just looking for something inexpensive, uh, maybe they're shopping for a you know kid's first car, whatever, they're just looking for a second vehicle uh, that's easy on gas, whatever. I would prepare a list that just says, these are my top five gas savers. Uh, these are my top five bargains. Uh, these are my top five, you know, super clean cars, whatever. So when you've got somebody who's kind of expressing interest, they're going to appreciate that you can take them to certain cars right away that um, that fit the description of what they're looking for. And these would be, you know, your picks, so to speak. So um, think about, um, you know, preparing your list in that way. If you don't prepare it in an actual list that you hand out, just think about having that list in your head at least as to what you could refer to to, um, to, to take people right to the the, the best five in the inventory and, and have a chance to really uh, zero in on, on what their needs are or what matches up with what they're saying their needs are. Now, I would also suggest pairing up with another salesperson. As you get to know other salespeople, uh, that'll be helpful. You kind of want to watch each other's back and protect each other and take care of one another's customers when the other's away. So for that reason, it's important to uh, pair up with somebody who's, and it doesn't have to be just one person, it can be more than one, but you want to sort of form um, partnerships with the other salespeople, especially that have a different day off than you do, so that you can take care of any of their customers that come around on their day off and, uh, and vice versa. You know, often it's going to happen that you've got a customer who is buying the car and all they've got to do is come in tomorrow and sign the final documents. Um, in which case, you know, you don't really as a salesperson want to come in on your day off just to do that and finish the deal. You may, and, and your manager may require that. But in the event that they don't, you just want to have another salesperson who can handle that closing for you. And, you know, in dealerships, they'll tell you what the policy is about splitting deals. The managers will usually have a pretty clear cut policy about how that is done. Um, so you may split your commission 50-50 with somebody if you greet the customer and you log them today and they come back in three days later on your day off and somebody else works with them and closes them, then that may be a split deal. It just depends on how you document. I would certainly want to document the customers that you greeted. You can't really document if you don't know your name, know their name, but we'll get to that. And then um, just just make sure that you've logged the people that you're working with. And if you have somebody that's coming in on your day off, possibly coming in, you know, you can uh, reach out to them the night before and say, listen, if you guys come around tomorrow, I'm on my, I'll be on my day off, but be sure and ask for Tony, you know, he can help you out. And uh, he, he knows the inventory, uh, you know, and we'll take care of you in, in my absence, whatever. So that's what that's all about. Just make sure you're paired up with somebody who can kind of take care of your customers when you're not around. And then you make sure and take good care of their customers when they're not there and uh, and just kind of scratch each other's back in that way and help each other out. And that'll keep other people from sliding in and getting the deals. Um, you know, there, <laughs> there are some salespeople out there who will try to slide in and take advantage of that and uh, sort of steal some half deals uh, where they can. So it's just uh, important to kind of look out for each other in that way. Now, understand before you ever greet your first customer, understand what it means when customers say they're just looking. And this is not just in the car business. This is whether we're shopping for clothing or appliances, furniture, you name it. It's our natural reaction as consumers, we've probably all done it, to say, you know, I'm just looking. It, what they're really saying to you as a salesperson is they're saying, I'm not ready for any assistance. I'm not ready to talk. I just want to kind of look around first. And that's okay. Expect that. It's sort of a knee-jerk reaction. Um, but you need to be prepared to kind of see through that because what it really, they don't really mean, I just want to look because 
really that's kind of silly in the end. They're going to spend, let's say you have a 400 car inventory. They're going to walk through the inventory and expect to find the one car out of 400 that is right for them. Why would they do that when you're standing right there as a professional salesperson that knows the inventory better than anybody? Why would they not take advantage of your expertise? Well, it's because we'll talk about that they sort of view you as the enemy and we'll cover that and, th and how to approach the customer when you get to the greeting. But just understand they're, they're protective, they're defensive. Some of them are even coming off bad experiences and they may like say they, they may sort of view you as the enemy. So they're just saying, I'm not ready. I'm just looking. Let me look around and that's okay. Engage them, say hello, hand them a business card, give them your name and uh, say, that's fine. Let me give you a minute to look around. And then after just a minute or two, not long at all, step back in and, um, and follow up and, and then just try to engage them in conversation. So just again, understand there's, when they're saying just looking, they don't really mean that. Uh, so just kind of say hello, give them the name, understand that's going to be their preliminary reaction. And then, um, and then just give them a little bit of space and then uh, step back in after just a few minutes. Now, the one sale per day approach in almost every dealership, when you've got a salesperson that works five days a week, we'll say, and sells on average a car a day, maybe they sell three on Saturday and none on Tuesday, but if they sell about five or six a week, you're talking about 20, 20 or 25 sales a month in almost every dealership. That's, that's a real champion of a salesperson. That's the volume that you're hoping for. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be, most dealerships are going to have a baseline. They want to see you sell at least eight to 10 a month. Some salespeople are going to sell 30 and 40 a month, uh, maybe more. Um, if they've been at the business a long time, got a lot of appointments, certainly it's possible to sell more than that. But the point is, if you're selling one a day, then you're a champion, you're a hero in most dealerships. So especially if you're taking good care of those customers and those customers are saying good things about you and the dealership and their experience, then, then that's really makes you a superhero. So just understand that one a day is a great number. And the point, the, the reason that's important is because you're typically going to close one out of every three or four customers that you talk to. Uh, so you hope that you're talking to three or four customers a day that you're greeting and talking to at least that many people on average. And, but also just understand, focus on the one customer you're with. Remember every customer that you greet, I just need one sale today. And the customer that's standing in front of me could be that sale. If that customer doesn't buy today, it's not because I'm not ready to help them. They may opt to, to go elsewhere, whatever. But if they don't buy, it's not because we weren't ready to help them. Because we weren't focused on them or treating treating them like a legitimate buyer. So, you know, throughout this material, I kind of emphasize um, the word buy or buyer. I think we want to think of every customer as a buyer and, and just kind of get that in your head in terms of instead of thinking of them as a customer, think of them as a buyer. Because, you know, the, the old smart alecky sales people or sales managers always said, you know, people don't come to a car dealership to buy a ham sandwich. You know, it's the idea is they're there to buy a car. That's why they're there. They're shopping for a car. They say just looking, but the reality is we know they're there because they have an interest in an automobile. That's what we sell. And so if they pull in, they have an interest in or a need in buying a car. And, you know, it's not to say you don't have people wander out of the service department who really are just killing time and, and don't really have a need for a car today. But if they turned in and drove over to the used car department, got out and started looking around at cars, they are there, there to buy a car, not a ham sandwich. And so just understand that, you know, that's what that's what they're there for. Let's focus on that one customer and understand they're going to tell us they're just looking, but we know what they're really there for. Let's give them a minute and let's step back in and talk to them. And as soon as they understand that, you know what, you're actually a, a, a nice approachable person. And especially when they find out that you know the inventory really well, then they're going to start to warm up and they're going to allow you to, uh, to do your job. And that's where you uh, start to earn your, your business. So, uh, I would just say, think of one per day and just focus on the customer you're with, expect they're going to buy and just um, give them your full attention and, um, and make sure that uh, uh, you don't uh, dismiss them for any reason. Now, learning to trial close, trial close is like a test close. And um, 
let's say you're working with a couple and they've got a young daughter who's buying their first car and uh, you know, the daughter's looking at certain cars and she kind of zeroes in on a little, you know, whatever, a little Civic. And uh, you can just ask, you know, the, the, the person and sometimes understand mom or dad may actually be the ultimate decision maker and the buyer. But what we're really trying to do is zero in on, do we like this particular vehicle uh, well enough? Is that the one you think you might want to buy? Can you see yourself driving that one? You know, that's what we're really calling trial close. Or if they test drive something, when you return from the test drive, you'll say, so so what do you think? Is this the car? Is this the one you guys would want to buy? If we've got everything worked out, obviously assuming the terms worked out and everything in the financing or whatever, if we can get all those things worked out, is this the car you want to buy? That's a trial close or an actual close. We're just saying, is this the one? Do you like this car well enough that this is the car you would buy if we could get the rest of the that things worked out. That's really your primary job as a salesperson is to what they call land the customer on the car or whatever it is they're buying. In this case, if you're shopping for a used car, your, your primary job is to, one, one of your first jobs is to engage them in a way that they don't run off, right? That we make a good impression and they agree to stay around. And then once they get comfortable with you and they start talking to you, then our next job becomes to land them on a certain vehicle. Let's find the car that matches what they're telling you they need and let's um, zero in on the one particular car that they like and that they would buy if the terms were right, that that's definitely a car they like and they would definitely buy it if we get the terms right. So again, you know, your job as a salesperson is not going to be work, work out the terms. You're, you're not really going to have a lot to do probably with down payment or negotiating the payments. You, you might at some stage, but initially you don't concern yourself with that. You just concern yourself with finding the right car for this customer and then just uh, let the other people in the building try to help you work out the terms. But your primary job is to keep them there and find out what kind of car they would buy and then get them committed to buy that particular car, you know, if the terms were favorable. Now, practice, um, and I say if only in your mind, on uh, at asking every customer to buy and just Try to get, incorporate that in every um, interaction that you have with a customer. Before they leave, there's going to come a point when you're going to say, you know, especially if you're, if you're really shopping inventory and you've been on a lot, you're going to do that. You're going to ask them to buy. Do you like that one? Would you buy that one today? Is there anything I could do to help you? You know, and, and, I, and I think it's important to have that sort of urgency and expect that the customer is going to buy a car somewhere today. And so if they leave, you don't want to look up tomorrow and find out they went down the street and, and ran what we call running, ran into a salesman somewhere else and end up buying a car somewhere else. So just make sure that you have one treated them as a buyer, not a shopper, you know, and understand they're really in the market to buy a car. And if you've done your job and helped them find a car that seems to suit them, then then, then do that close, ask them to buy and try to get in the habit of asking every single customer, uh, you know, to buy. Do you like this one well enough? What about this? Do you like this? Is this one you would buy? You know, does this seem to suit your needs? Is this one you would buy if we could get the terms worked out? You know, that's, that's really what we're doing. We're trying to, we're trying to lock in on the one that suits them and customers are defensive. They play all kinds of games and they've, you know, read something or they've heard from their neighbor or their dad you know, techniques to use. And so they're trying to be coy and trying not to, you know, fall in love with anything. Uh, but so that's why we always have to be sort of working through that and just say, you know, do you like this one well enough? Do you like this car well enough that you would buy it if I could get the terms worked out? And, and you're just looking for a yes on that. Once you do, then you know you've landed on the right car. And this is one they would definitely buy if you could get the terms worked out. Now, know what it means to TO or turnover. Um, I think this means different things in different places, but generally TO means turnover. And that's what we've all seen is kind of a classic um, car business thing where you turn over to your manager or whatever. But most dealerships have a policy where they want to see, and, and even if they don't have that policy, it's just important to understand that it helps to have a second person talk to customers in a lot of situations. So 
that means let's assume the dealership that we're with wants to see us turn over to a manager or a second salesperson then what we're going to do is we're going to work with the customer and when the customer is not getting landed on a vehicle we're not having any luck getting them zeroed in on a particular vehicle or they're sort of um you know you're losing ground with them and you feel like you're losing them then it would be a good idea to to stop and do a turnover or a to to another person this is where your second salesperson you know if you've got a partner that you work with um, you know this can be helpful um, it's helpful frankly if you've got somebody else who's just sometimes it can be a matter of skin color it can be a male versus female thing whatever it is don't concern yourself with it there may be something unspoken that the customer is for whatever reason is not comfortable with you and don't take it personally just understand that a customer that's not comfortable with you might be comfortable with Tony and vice versa. So it's not personal. You just understand that for whatever reason, you're not getting through to them. And so you would do a turnover. And what I would recommend in that situation is we don't say, um, let me go get my manager. What you do is learn different ways to, to do a turnover without it meaning, without it being awkward. And the best way I think to do that is, um, it's just a break away as though you got to you just thought of something you got to do or as if you thought you heard them page you to the office or whatever it might be while they're still wandering around and talking a little bit but you can feel that you're not connecting with them just say um um folks give me one second i'll be i'll be right back just uh, give me one second and you don't have to tell them why you're going just break away um, and be quick about it and go get the second salesperson, get the manager and just say, look, I'm, I'm not getting anywhere with these folks. You know, they're, here's what I know, but they're just not opening up to me. And for whatever reason, you, you feel like you're starting to lose them. Um, you know, that's where you turn over to a second person. And a lot of times that second person can come in and connect with them, uh, for whatever reason. And, um, and so like I say, it's not personal. Don't, don't belabor it. Just understand that sometimes a second person or a second face can come in and have better better luck but managers want to talk to the customers uh, in a lot of situations because they just want to know has the salesperson done everything to help you um, and they and it's a way frankly for those managers to to test um, the effectiveness of the salesperson obviously if a salesperson didn't find anything and then the manager steps in and finds the right car for them then then it makes you wonder if we're doing our job as a salesperson do we know our inventory have we really done our job to help land the customer on a particular vehicle so that's um that's important and why we want to turn over but don't take it personally uh think of it if you're a new salesperson just think of it in terms of it's going to help you it's going to help you close more deals and get more commissions um, so it's not, uh, don't think of it as a negative thing. Think of it as a positive opportunity for you to go get somebody else involved. And, um, and, and in the process, you'll be demonstrating to the managers that you're doing everything you can. Um, you just didn't connect for whatever reason. And now you can turn it over to somebody else to, to give it a try. Um, and, and there will be times you can step in behind somebody else and you just make click with somebody and, and be able to pick up with them and, and uh, zero in on a car for whatever reason. Uh, the definition of a be back um, it's a classic thing everybody talks about be backs uh, just be prepared to be laughed at if you go to the sales manager's desk and say the customer said they'll be back on Saturday you know that's just that's classic car business or sales thing you know the customer is just in the same way they say we're just looking they sort of get rid of you as a salesperson by saying you know what we're gonna run on but uh, but we kind of like a couple things here we'll be back on Saturday you know, um, just just understand that that's a common expression. It happens, um, but let's understand that that customer who says they're going to be back on Saturday, usually they're not. So just understand that going in. And I've already said, expect that the customer is going to buy now. I would say most customers buy, we used to say 72 hours. I'd say it's probably more like 24 to 48 hours. You know, you'll find that most customers who visit a car lot have already done a fair amount of shopping online. So they're farther along in the buying process than most. So I would treat every customer as though they've shopped online. They know kind of what they want when they pull in the dealership and they're there to buy. And they're probably going to buy a vehicle somewhere today. And so what you want to do is um, have that sort of urgency and don't 
listen to them when they say be back. If there's a way to close the sale today, if we can find the right car and we can get the terms right, that customer is at the dealership to buy a car. And so if they found the right car and they found the right terms, assuming of course they have time, that doesn't mean that people don't have a soccer game starting in 15 minutes or whatever. Obviously that kind of stuff happens. But if, if there's no obligation that's taking them away, then I would approach on the idea that they're in the market to buy a car today and you need to be prepared to uh, respond to that, have the urgency and, and, while, you know, we hope they do come back Saturday, and when they do, we certainly hope we made the kind of impression that when they come back Saturday, they're asking for you. But just understand that when they say be back Saturday, in most cases, that's not the case. So just you, you're you going to miss them if they go on down the road, and that's why we want to turn them over to somebody else. And if somebody else steps in and talks to them for a minute, and they reaffirm, got to be at a soccer game in 15 minutes, and fine. That's the way it goes, and, and maybe we will get a chance to deal with them if they like us and we handle them well, then um, and they like what we showed them. Then mostly, if you made a favorable impression on them, then you will have a much better chance to get them back when they do come around, whether that's Saturday or otherwise. Now, um, make sure that if a customer runs into a salesperson or runs into a salesman, that it's you. And we always used to have this laugh about you know you would. Um, you would talk to somebody today who said they were looking for a used Honda. They were looking for a little gas saver car, trying to find a, uh, a two door car or something to get back and forth to work. And then you follow up with them tomorrow because they didn't buy today. And when you talk to them tomorrow, I said, yeah, when I left your place, I stopped at so-and-so, you know, Chevy down the street and I ended up buying a four wheel drive truck, you know, well, the, the joke is what happened? Well, they ran into a salesperson, right? They ran into somebody else who, um, manage to get them to get excited about something that there was some something that the person did to get them um, interested enough in that vehicle and get committed and drive it home so you know will the customer will the customer end up with some buyer's remorse maybe so but the reality is they bought a car they got committed to a car and they bought it and they drove home excited about it so uh, that's what i mean by running into a salesperson just understand that they're uh, you want to be that salesperson, be the person who, you know, did everything you could to find a car that's right. Um, get them excited about whatever, you know, whatever gets them excited and um, understand that buying a car is a pretty emotional thing. I mean, it's a, uh, it's not, I mean, with some people it's pretty analytical. Um, but for the most part, it's something we don't do very often. It's pretty exciting for us as buyers. And so it's a pretty emotional thing. It's, it's an exciting thing that happens. So to the extent we can find something that works for the customer and we can get them excited about buying a new car. And, and, you know, that's why we ask the person, you know, what about this? Can you see yourself driving this? I mean, that's, this, well, this is a, a pretty nice uh, um, vehicle. It seems to match up with what you're looking for. Can you get excited about that? Is that something you'd like to drive? and uh, could be proud to have in your driveway, you know, that's really what it's about, right? So it's, it's, um, it's about, let's be that salesperson who uh, can help them get excited about what it is they're looking to buy. Now let's, um, whoops, let's look at the, uh, the greeting part. I'm running a little bit longer than I meant to, so I'll try to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, so the first impression, uh, you know, when we're actually greeting a customer on the lot, Let's think about the, uh, the first impression that we make. Now, um, we want to acknowledge everyone in the group. If it's three or four people that step up there, even when it's young kids, the parents kind of appreciate usually when you, you know, even acknowledge the young people and shake the hands, you know, even of the youngsters, the young people certainly appreciate it in most cases. And the parents seem to um, appreciate that you acknowledge them. But mostly it's about making sure that if it's husband and wife, don't make the mistake of just greeting one and assuming that one is the buyer. We never want to just assume that the husband is the buyer uh, and we don't want to go the other way. We, we need to regard, have the same regard for both. We greet them both. We shake hands of both. Um, and we, when we learn early on, you know, who's, who's the buyer. Sometimes it's challenging because sometimes you've got maybe the, uh, the husband is the financial decision maker, but the car is for the wife. So the car has got to suit her needs, but it's got to meet his financial needs. And so that's one of the things that you, you do 
as a salesperson has just learned to navigate that and how to uh, to make that work. I, I would just tell you my tip would be if if the wife, if the car that we're buying is for the wife, she's going to be the one driving it. Just focus on her um, and, and kind of tease him and have a little fun with it. But just basically do what you can to try to meet her needs. She's going to be the one driving it. She needs to be satisfied with it. And she's the one who's going to, you know, either be ashamed of it or pleased about it when she parks it at the grocery store or whatever. So zero in on her. Try to find... Uh, um, you know, in this example, try to find something that seems to suit her needs and that she would enjoy driving and then just then turn around and, and deal with obviously the financial part of it. And obviously, in that scenario, the husband would speak up here and there and probably, you know, try to steer the, the selection process to a degree. But until then, just just focus on the buyer who's going to be driving the car and uh, and try to find one that suits their needs. Now, you want to get and remember the names. Just, you know, whatever techniques you need to develop, obviously there's all kinds of tools out there to teach a person to, to improve on their that part, but retain the names. Get their names as you greet them, log them in your memory. If you need to write them on a notepad, even if you just jot them down when they're looking at the car and so that they don't see you jot them down, but capture their names. Make sure that you remember their names and eventually you're going to want to get a phone number and how to contact them as well. But just make sure you know their names and you can address them by their names. It's going to make for a lot more personal interaction and it's going to help you to, to break the ice and, uh, and get on a better um, level with them. Now, understand the mindset of the buyer. As I said, when you greet a customer on the lot, just know that they, they regard you as the enemy. They, they think that your job, your main job is to earn a fat commission on them and that you're trying to get in their pocket and get their wallet. So, you know, you're the enemy. Understand that. Be prepared to deal with it. Give them some space, as I already said, and then just, just hang around. And once they get to know you, they'll understand that you're genuine, you're authentic, you're, uh, you're there to help first and foremost. And you really are when you think about it. If you can't help a customer find a car that suits their needs, you don't make any commission. So really, you know, you, you've got to help them find a car that suits their needs and that they'd be interested in buying. If you can't help them, there's no commission in it for you. So in that way, you're sort of on their side. You, you want to try to help them find the car that's right and just, uh, and just know that even though they think of you that way, just know, just remember, you're not the enemy. You have to hang around and you'll eventually need to crack through that and just, but understand that's sort of the defense mechanism that a lot of people have when you first greet them. So be prepared for that. Um, give a little space, at least briefly, as I said, and then, um, you know, be prepared, expect to hear that just looking thing and understand how to deal with that. Now, I would also suggest that you do what you can to break the ice and be prepared to have some things that you just, you know, it's just normal conversation. I'm not a big believer in having a real scripted thing that you do when you greet customers on the lot. I think, you know, you just need to be yourself and chit chat and have conversation. And if they're, they walk up and they're carrying a cup from a local restaurant, you can talk to them about that and just break the ice and, you know, tell, hey, I've been over there. I really like the, you know, the onion rings or whatever. Just just chat. Don't worry about trying to jump right in and, and sell them a car. Get to know them a little bit. Put them at ease. Let them know that you're, you're you know, a normal person who's just there to try to help. And, and let them know that, you know, you're not the enemy. You're just a, a, a nice guy who's trying to, to help out, whatever. So, uh uh, just whatever methods you want to use to break the ice. I put some examples here. You know, how did you guys end up over here? You know, what it, what brought you in here today? What made you turn the corner and come over here? Was there, have you seen an ad on TV or did you buy your last car here? Just, let's just talk about that for a minute. And, uh, and there's no rush. I mean, you got all day. You're just looking for one sale a day. So there's no reason to rush into choosing a car. Let's talk a little bit. You know, the only thing I would balance against that is we always have to be mindful of our customer's schedule and they very well may have a soccer game coming up as we talked about. So we don't want to dilly dally and waste time, but we also don't want to rush through that part where we're just trying to get to know the customer and get them to feel at ease. So we just don't have to rush. If they're okay, let's put them at ease. Let's go slow. Let's chit chat a little bit and talk to them about whatever you feel comfortable with. I gave some suggestions here. Are you looking for something in particular? Are you guys um, looking to buy something in particular? Are you still weighing options, for example? You can start to talk about the cars in that way. But, you know, mostly I would just I would just chat a little bit about whatever it is that uh, 
that uh, you want to do to uh, break the ice and, and open it up a little bit, but you're really just trying to find out, you know, what I would just say first and foremost, how did they end up here? Was it a, a Facebook ad? Was it a promotion? You know, what is it that brought them in here today? And you can talk about that, kind of extend that conversation a little bit and see what they're thinking, kind of understand where they're coming from. And it'll give you a better chance to respond to them. Like I said, remember, don't rush, focus on their needs. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to listen. A lot of times when we're nervous, especially if you're a new salesperson, your tendency, you're nervous and you, you tend to talk too much. I just can't emphasize why it's so important. Just listen, listen, listen. Uh, try to get the customer talking and then just be quiet and let them talk and jot notes in your notepad and come to understand kind of what they're looking for, what's important to them. Um, and you start to, you know, sometimes for uh, maybe in a husband and wife situation, what's real important to her is safety. And, you know, what's real important to him is fuel economy, whatever. But you want to really just kind of listen, zero in on what it is that's important to them. You know, in sales, it's called hot buttons. What's what's kind of their their pressure points or what's what's important to them. And so you need to really listen because if you listen, the, the customer is going to tell you how to sell them, so to speak, or what needs you need what itches you need to scratch in order to be able to to get them to say yes this is a car that would meet our needs and yes we would buy it if the terms were right so you know you just really need to listen first because when you listen you've got a much better chance to uh, to kind of zero in on what it is that they're looking for and you'll have a better chance to take them right to it um, on that note a couple things to think about i would always urge in a greeting in any environment and I don't in any kind of sales if you can get the customer to come sit down and talk to you um, then I would do in whatever way that you can do that you're gonna find that your closing ratio goes through the roof if you can greet a customer on the lot and whatever your method is for doing that and let's say you're at a dealership that's got 800 cars and you've got you know 65 two-door cars if I could set a customer at a desk and go through the photos online, especially show them online on a tablet, whatever, my top five cars and see if any of these interest you, I think that's your primary job as a salesperson is help the customer narrow that search. Help the customer. They don't want to have to walk through 65 cars and open the doors on 65 different cars. If they can, if you can get them to sit down at a desk and talk to you and tell you what it is they're looking for, then you as a salesperson have to know your inventory well enough to be able to take that information and be ideally you would take that information and you would say folks wait right here can i get you something cold to drink and let them sit right there in the comfort of the showroom while you go get the car that they just described and you pull it up and show it to them and maybe you zero in on it the very first time but the point is when you get the customer to slow down and just sit at your desk and chat and they see your pictures and you have some more conversation they get to know you a little bit they're they're disarmed they're more at ease they feel more comfortable with you and not only did your closing percentage just go up but your uh, commission is probably going up at the same time because they're more relaxed they're not going to fight with you in the same way they would fight someone else they they're starting to get comfortable with you and uh, and now the other thing is to just you know we'll talk about when we get into the closing uh, part of the training is how to just make sure you build value in whatever it is that um, that you're selling. You know, make sure that, that you hit on those those features and benefits that are of value because the more value they perceive in the vehicle, the more they're willing to pay for it and the more your commission turns out to be. So I would say just listen to the customer, but anytime you can think through ways that you can pull the customer away from inventory and pull them and seat them at your desk. And when you can do that, you're going to impress the managers, uh, you're going to uh, close more sales, and, uh, and you're, going to, you're going to earn higher commissions in the process. So just pull them away from cars, sit them down, talk. Um, by all means, like I say, have some pictures at your desk uh, that you know, are good conversation starters and chit chat a little bit they get to know you and know that you're not the bad guy after all and uh, and suddenly you're going to find yourself closing a lot more deals so um that's probably good for uh preliminary training uh we'll move on into the actual closing and car selection next but that should be a good starting point